being from Ontario, we are so lucky to have so many wild spots to explore and paddle. Huge parks and massive amounts of crown land. A couple of my favorite spots to go are Wabakimi and Woodland Caribou Provincial Park. But wedged right in between those two is a spot called St. Raphael. It's a massive wilderness area that I really didn't know very much about, but in the summer of 2023, I had the better part of two weeks to canoe and explore through this, what turned out to be incredible spot. I've only been paddling here for a few minutes, but I've got a feeling that this place is gonna exceed my expectations and I think this is going to be an amazing canoe trip. It's that perfect time of year right now where we're in the middle of August. The bugs seem good, the water levels seem good. I think it's going to be really cool. I think one of the most interesting parts about St. Raphael to me is that there's not very much information about it out there. There's a few maps online and a couple videos, but really for the most part, there's hardly anything. Not entirely sure what my game plan here today is. I was kind of originally thinking that I might just get here and camp at the first spot I found. Because truthfully, I'm pretty tired after the long, long, long drive up here. But it's such a beautiful day right now and I'm trying to take advantage of the good weather. So I might, I might try these portages. Now the first one's 750 meters followed by a uh, short paddle and then another little 80 meter portage. So we'll see how far I make it today. The limited information can definitely kind of make it seem more daunting, more challenging, maybe a wilder trip. I wasn't really sure at the time, but I was looking at it as a challenge, trying to locate the portage trails and navigate through all this wilderness that I'd never seen before. Maybe it's just the fact that I was tired, but I always seem to be a little bit anxious, a little bit nervous on the first day of every trip, and this one was no different. Sometimes on trips like these, I think it's easy to feel overwhelmed and maybe out of place. Maybe you're not sure whether you've got the skill or the know-how to complete a trip like this, but thankfully for me, this first portage was marked and definitely helped ease me into the trip. Oh. This guy. This little blue walleye here. First fish of the trip. Didn't take very long at all, so I think that's a good sign. I'm gonna let this guy go. See you, buddy. After a couple hours of paddling and portaging, I was on to the lake where I'd planned to camp for the night. I'd made really great time today. I was actually quite a bit further ahead than I expected to be. 
I did have a couple campsites marked on my map, but whether they exist or not, well, I need to find that out. This was my first canoe trip back in Northern Ontario after the better part of a month canoe tripping through the Yukon Territory. I have to say, it was a pretty nice feeling going to bed that night and finding a campsite, not having to think about the possibility of a grizzly bear coming to pay me a visit that evening. In so many ways, this trip felt like coming home. Pretty awesome day one of the trip. I cannot complain or ask for anything more than uh, what I got today. I really was just expecting to get on the water and maybe make a couple kilometers before finding camp, but ended up doing a couple portages and uh, making it quite a bit further than I had expected to. Weather was absolutely gorgeous and uh, found a half decent campsite. But uh, just super excited to be here and cannot wait to, uh, to see what tomorrow brings. I'm sure I'm not the only one to feel this way, but the second day of every trip for me feels so much better. After getting a good night's rest, everything just kind of comes together. Absolutely perfect start to the day here, wow. Gorgeous weather, flat calm here on the water and uh, I've got about 20 to 30 kilometers I think before I've got any portaging or rapids to worry about so I'm really looking forward to this morning. Just had my line in here for a couple minutes. Beautiful. Beautiful uh, walleye start the day. Let's go. Yeah, we'll let this guy go. Today was really about taking advantage of the good weather that I was clearly blessed with. Flat calm conditions on this huge lake. I would travel from Dilliseps to Manis Lake today. I often find it interesting just how slow it seems like you're going when you're paddling on a flat calm lake. I know it's much easier to paddle when conditions are calm, but man, does it ever feel like you're going absolutely nowhere. Lost cast, Luke. Pike. Hey, little pike. Just gonna go on back too. See ya, brother. I've now made it onto Manis Lake and I've got maybe, I think it's around 15, 16 kilometers to go across the lake. It's about lunchtime right now, just before noon. And uh, yeah, hopefully by five o'clock I'll be across this lake. But the fishing here, I gotta say, is really good. Lou, you're very excited right now really like fishing, don't you? All right. Almost immediately after I'd finished the little section of creek that connects Dilliseps to Manis Lake, I got incredibly lucky and had a loon with a chick that 
swam so close to the canoe. I probably spent the better part of half an hour just watching them, filming them swim around the canoe in circles. It was a pretty cool experience. Of course, it's not uncommon to see loons on canoe trips. I mean, they're just part of the landscape up here, but to have them spend that much time that close to you, that doesn't happen very often. made it to the first uh, set of rapids here and I can hear it I can't see it though and it sounds it sounds big but quite often they sound a lot bigger than they are so I'm kind of expecting this to be a really bony run but who knows Looks really bony. Um, I'm sure it's runnable, but I might just line it either down this left side or there's actually a little portage trail just behind me here. And uh, it looks like there's a spot to camp maybe right at the very end. So I could potentially do that. Looking back on the footage now, there's a couple things that are very apparent to me. The first is that rapids never seem to look as big or intimidating on camera as they do in person. The second is that apparently I have no idea how to rub sunscreen into my face. Regardless, I decided to complete the portage and camp at the end of it, at the boat cache that wasn't exactly perfect, but I could make do for the night. Another pretty awesome day out here in St. Raphael. Managed to cover a good amount of distance today, uh, somewhere around 35 kilometers, and uh, about 50 kilometers so far we've traveled on this trip. Hey Lou, 50K. We're a quarter of the way through, and we're two days in. Um, got some kind of inclement looking weather coming the next couple days. High winds are called for tomorrow and then the following day they're calling for thunderstorms but as everyone knows that can change. So tomorrow weather pending um, there are five sets of rapids that I'm either going to have to run, portage, line, I'm not sure. Beautiful evening, really good day, and probably gonna try some fishing here in a second. Whatever shortcomings this campsite did have were more than made up for with the fishing. In the end, I'd probably catch half a dozen walleye and one decent pike. <laughs> Look at this guy. Just to top things off, I also got to witness a pretty incredible sunset. Day two had been a good one.
morning of day three. I think we're in for a good day. First fish of the day. I had a feeling that today, more than any other day on this trip, was going to be difficult. I remember going over the maps that I did have and even looking at satellite imagery and not being able to find any portages for a lot of these rapids. I'd be the first person to admit that my whitewater skills are definitely not the best. The fact that I was traveling solo on this trip meant that my room for air was a little bit less than traveling with a partner or a group for that matter. But I was thinking as long as I took my time and used a bit of common sense that I'd be fine making my way through these rapids. Almost immediately after the rapid, I remember that Betty Lou was acting a little bit weird. Her nose was kind of twitching and she was whining a little bit. Generally speaking, the only time she does that is when we're fishing or if there's a bear or moose on the shore. And sure enough, there was a cow moose eating on the opposite shore. I'd probably spend 20 minutes or more filming and watching her eat and wade through the shallows. I've been extremely lucky over the years to see hundreds of animals on canoe trips now, but I'll tell you, seeing a moose, it just never gets old. Finished the third set of rapids there, and it is super, super bony here. Very, very low water. Also extremely windy right now, and uh, here's we have a changing weather system. Three more sets to navigate around, and uh, yeah, things are looking, things are looking okay. Knock on wood. Just coming up to the uh, last three sets of rapids here, 
and these are truthfully the ones that I'm more worried about than the other ones uh, but we'll just have to see how they are hopefully they are easy enough to line or get down I don't know if there'll be any marked portages there doesn't seem to be portages around the last couple that I went down but anyways we'll see Well, there's that set done. We've got two more now. I think these two are probably going to be the most challenging, but you never know. So cool here, making pretty good time, pretty good progress as well. I got the last major set coming up ahead, but so far it's been awesome, it's been a lot of fun too. Things were definitely looking up as I made my way to the final set of rapids. And when I got to them, even though I'm no whitewater expert, I could definitely tell that these were a very low consequence and pretty straightforward set of rapids to run. It seemed like the perfect way to end the day. Oh, that was so awesome. Love that. Nice way to finish off the rapids here. Oh, that was really cool. It was definitely a good feeling to be finished all the major rapids for the trip. 
I'd noticed that uh, over the last couple of days, Betty, well, she'd been acting like a bit of a caged lion. Anyone who has healers probably understands that no amount of running can wear them out, but you definitely have to give them some exercise. When I looked beside me and I noticed the shoreline was pretty good, I decided to let the little beast run. It's not something I do all the time, but I absolutely love watching Betty Lou run up and down the shoreline. With the wind picking up later in the afternoon, it was a good reminder that it was time to find a campsite. I was looking for something with a bit of protection from the wind. The forecast was for gusts up to 70, 80 kilometers an hour and the chance of severe thunderstorms. I was more than likely going to be there for a day or two. Here's the old fire pit here, which honestly, as you can tell, really has not hardly been used. And if it was used, it was a long time ago. I think I'm going to clear a little area just back in here. There's some kind of flat, mossy ground. But, uh, I've got a few trees i got to take down too. I might, I might drop this uh, standing deadwood here because I don't want that falling over. They're calling for winds 70, 80 kilometers an hour, so a couple of these dead trees here might have to come down. After about an hour of cleanup, I finally had a site where I could set my tarp up and not have to worry about standing dead wood falling on me in the middle of the night. It ended up being a really nice, calm evening where I could sit down and enjoy my dinner, but there's definitely a bit of a weird feeling with the smoke from nearby wildfires blowing in. I was just happy to have a sheltered spot where I could spend the next at least 24 hours. That was a really good day. I feel glad to be done those rapids and to have safely made my way through all of them. And it was nice to get a chance to run that last one. That was really fun. It'll be nice tomorrow to have a rest day. I'm not planning on going anywhere as there's thunderstorms in the forecast. So it will be hanging out here for the next 24 hours at least. That's okay. It's not a bad sight at all.
following morning when I woke up, the wind was absolutely howling. It was obvious to me that I wasn't going to be moving anywhere today. I think it's going to be one of those days. Hang out underneath the tarp and stay dry because I think we got ourselves in a pretty good storm coming here. Although thankfully there wasn't a ton of thunder and even the amount of rain we got was pretty minimal, the wind was just unbelievable. And I felt extremely lucky to be tucked in the bush away from it. It was a long, restful day. Back on the water again. Late start here on day five, I believe it is, of the trip. And it's felt like a long day and a half being at that last campsite. But finally, there's been a little break in the weather. And although it's extremely windy still, at least the rain stopped. I'm gonna try and make uh, my way south here, which I should have kind of a tailwind, kind of a broadside wind at times, but Hopefully the weather holds up and I can make some decent progress today. It's just nice to be moving again. The campsite that I'd stayed at for the last couple nights, it wasn't very far from the portage that led me into Churchill Lake and that was my goal for the day. Considering that St. Raphael probably only sees a handful of paddlers every year, I was pleasantly surprised that for the most part, most of Ortages were in really good shape. Somebody had even recently been in and flagged a lot of them. The one issue I'd been having in St. Raphael was there seemed to be a bit of a lack of campsites. So when I got onto Churchill Lake and discovered that, as predicted, it was extremely windy there as well, I felt very committed to paddle across to find a campsite. Had I been able to stop earlier, I probably would have, because it was a little bit hairy out there at times. It is incredibly windy on this lake right now. White capping all across the open water here. I'm gonna try and skirt around the outside. Hopefully I can keep uh, plugging along here. I don't know. One thing about these wind days that I will say is that when you get to camp, it's very rewarding when you've made progress in these conditions. And I'm making progress, so keep plugging away.
After several hours of hugging the shoreline, I would eventually make it to the other end of the lake. I'd even find a spot that looked like it was used for shore lunches by one of the outpost camps on Churchill. It seemed perfect for the night. When I think about a canoe trip, this is this is exactly what I think about. Boreal forest, lakes, small rivers and streams in between. Good fishing, nice campsites, and nobody around. Such a beautiful area, and we are very, very, very lucky to have this. With more strong winds in the forecast, I was up and on the water early to try and make my way to St. Raphael Lake before the winds picked up. Just a beautiful, beautiful morning out right now. The sun's just poked over the trees. We got a light breeze coming from the south today, right now. Beautiful, beautiful start to the day, wow. Just finished the portage um, that brings me out onto St. Raphael Lake and this lake looks stunning. There's a ton of islands on most of these lakes. It's still quite calm out on the water. I'm gonna put a line in here and uh, troll my way along. See if I can't catch a few walleye or pike. I planned this trip to take 12 days, um, but I only brought 10 days worth of food, or 10 days worth of dinner, I should say. So I'm, if I do end up staying the full 12 days, I'm gonna have to rely on fish for at least a couple of meals, which judging by the fishing so far, I don't think will be much of an issue, but 
Maybe tonight it'll be a fish fry. Cessna float plane buzzed me there. It uh, was either dropping off or maybe resupplying some fishermen here on St. Raphael Lake. There's an outpost just around the corner from me, but love seeing planes. Right uh, just before the pandemic, I was maybe a quarter of the way through getting my pilot's license, and I should really go back and uh, try and complete that now something really incredible about flying if you've never done it it's just it's a pretty wild experience and uh, lots of fun it's expensive very expensive which apparently I've got too many hobbies I can't fund them all not long after the pilot flew over top of me he actually turned back around and landed right beside me we chatted for quite a few minutes and he actually let me know about some really good fishing spots that he knew about and a couple campsites as well. Turned out that he knew exactly what he was talking about because the fishing was absolutely incredible. And I'd end up spending the rest of the day just cast go. after cast reeling in walleye. There we go. How is this for a nice healthy walleye? This guy's gonna be either dinner or lunch. But well, that's a nice fish. Gorgeous little walleye here. There he is, another fish. This guy's going back. See you, brother. Yeah. It's about the seventh walleye here in the last couple minutes. Another nice fish. See ya. Can get another one here? Hey. Hey, I know you want one. Another nice one too. It's really beautiful, beautiful fish. Look how blue this guy is. It's a gorgeous, gorgeous walleye. He's going back in the drink. Oh, see ya, big guy. Oh, a dandy walleye. Wow. Look at that face, only a mother could love it. Oh God. Another one, gorgeous fish. Let's see ya buddy. I don't know how many of that is now. 20, it's gotta be somewhere around there. I've only been here, been here less than two hours. It's pretty good fishing. God, that's good. Yep, that's what you come here for. That is unreal how good that is. That was a really awesome day. It's not everywhere you go canoe tripping that you can uh, experience fishing like that and have this scenery and no one around. It's pretty cool. Got a lot of distance to make up tomorrow, so hopefully I can get up real early and uh, make some good progress, but awesome day and cannot wait to see what tomorrow brings. If it's anything like today, it'll be another amazing day.
Day seven already, holy. This trip is flying by. Got a much later start than I was expecting, but uh, it was raining on and off all night. And when my alarm went off at uh, 5 a.m. or 4 a.m. actually, uh, yeah, it was raining. I wasn't getting out of the tent, so I waited for the rain to stop, and now it is just coming up to eight o'clock and I'm getting on the water, but it's gonna be a uh, windy, hot day, but there's no rain in the forecast, and I'm just gonna plug away at it, see, see how far I can get today. Should be a great day. This day would begin in a pretty sheltered area on the lake, and it was kind of a nice break from battling headwinds like on previous days. I'd make my way to the first and only portage of the day. I found it really interesting in St. Raphael just how few portages there really were. In a 200 kilometer loop, there was just a handful, and honestly, most of them were just a couple hundred meters. After completing the portage, I was a lot more exposed to the wind on the next lake. It was a bit of a slow go, but I'd have to paddle and pole along the shoreline, but I was making pretty good progress. Another gorgeous lake and I still haven't seen another paddler. Right at the end of the day, as I'd made my way across the big lake, I ended up across from our fishing camp. I saw this eagle perched up in a tree, and I really wanted to get a shot of him, so I thought I'd stop on this little island to change lenses. As I pulled my canoe up onto this little island, I heard a crash in the bush, and initially I thought it was a moose, 
Eventually, I see this black bear swimming across the channel that led to mainland. What a cool experience that was. Later, after the bear had disappeared into the bush, I'd take a look on the island, see what it was there for, and honestly, I think he was just hot and wanted to lay in the shade. He was bedded down just a few feet from where I'd beached the canoe. What a great way to end the day. That's awesome. Beautiful little spot here. Tucked back in the bush. Nice little flat area. Oh. Couldn't ask for more. I am gonna sleep like a baby tonight. That was a uh, lot of paddling today. Covered somewhere 32, 33 kilometers maybe. And a lot of pulling, a lot of paddling, just a lot of being in the canoe today. Very cool at the end of the day to be able to see that bear. That was kind of the reward I think for pushing through all that wind today. That was, uh, that was awesome. Lucky to see that kind of stuff. Very lucky. Eight, I want to say it is now I'm starting to kind of lose track of what day I'm on excited to uh, get around the corner here and check out these pictographs I'm maybe 10 kilometers away from them eight kilometers something like that Today was going to be a relatively straightforward day for me as I just need to follow a long narrow stretch of water that seemed to go on forever and ever. There was hardly any portages though, maybe one that I was hoping to make it to by the end of the day, but it really didn't matter. After a couple hours, I finally found an area that looked pretty promising for the pictographs. Tall granite wall that looked like it had some overhang, that's almost always where they are. So I searched, I paddled over, and sure enough, there they were. I wasn't able to make out what all of them were, but I think the one was people paddling in a canoe. Not being able to tell what they all were didn't take away from the experience. It's always quite incredible seeing pictographs. Thank mm -hmm. you.
everybody. There you go. First walleye of the day. Not a bad little fish. Lots of wolf tracks on this beach. Those little ones are beddies, but but these it's a decent sized wolf. supposed to be a campsite around here, around this point somewhere. And I'm really hoping that there is. Oh. Oh man, somebody even cut firewood. If there wasn't a fire ban, I'd be having a bonfire tonight. This looks great. I feel like I keep repeating myself, but today was yet another fantastic day. I had great weather, a bit of a tailwind even for the majority of the day. Loved seeing those pictographs and uh, I made really good progress today as well, somewhere over 30 kilometers. I'm tired, I've got uh, maybe 40 kilometers left to go, uh, so maybe a day, two days, I don't know. And I was just thinking that I hadn't seen many loons today. It's the first day on this trip that I thought that. And almost right on cue as I pulled up here, I had a loon uh, start calling as he swam past and he's come back and serenade us tonight. Another nearly perfect morning. Wow, been lucky the last couple days here. Super calm water and uh, nice temperature too. Don't have too far this morning to paddle, maybe five kilometers or so. And uh, then I got a 1.6 kilometer portage that uh, leads into a creek from Lucky. I'm going to be real quiet this morning and uh, maybe get the chance to see another moose. Cause I'm actually kind of surprised I haven't seen more moose. There's definitely lots of marshy areas. Lots of, uh, lots of moose habitat for sure. So I'm going to be very quiet. Oh, Betty gets all excited every time I whisper because she knows. When I whisper, it's moose time. I 
didn't really realize just how spoiled I was that this trip didn't have many portages on it. But I will say that this 1.6 kilometer track certainly reminded me just how much work portaging really is. We made it, Lou. We made it. Oh. What's up? Oh. That was a long portage. And I'm glad, very glad, to be done that right now. Even though I'd been quiet, apparently I call it moose mode. I didn't see any moose. I didn't realize it at the time, but my final day of the trip would definitely be the best wildlife day I've ever had. For now, all there was to do though was to keep paddling and find a campsite. I've made it now onto De La Sepp's lake, which is a really nice lake. And uh, it's actually where I spent my first night on this trip. Camped uh, about 15, 20 kilometers from here. and. My goal today is to make it back to that campsite or somewhere around there anyways. I must have been tired when I reached camp because I remember clear as day sitting there after setting up my tarp in my little chair eating dehydrated pasta right out of the bag. It was extremely crunchy and I don't think it filled me up nearly as much, so I decided to cast out a few times and see if I could catch some walleye, which luckily for me, they seem to be abundant at this site. It was a perfect final dinner. It is hard to ask for anything more than this on a canoe trip. Amazing fishing, great camping, no people at all. Awesome wildlife sightings with the moose and the bear swimming in front of me. I wasn't really 100% sure what to expect uh, coming to St. Raphael. Never been here before and there's really not that much information on the park itself. But what a cool spot to come. I will 100% come back to this place. I've got no doubt in my mind that I'll be back here. I love being here. I feel very lucky to have been here. Just a very, very, very cool spot. What a place. I always find it bittersweet leaving trips. There's part of me that's happy to get home and review footage, relive memories, share stories with my wife and friends and family, but you never really want to leave. It was especially true today with the flat calm conditions, just absolutely beautiful morning.
Just a little ways past the first portage of the day, I was kind of in my own little world. And I just noticed some movement beside me in the bush. I can remember it like it was yesterday, and I honestly still can't believe it, but I saw a wolverine running beside me along the shoreline. I could barely even hold the camera steady, my hands were shaking, my heart was racing. Honestly, it was unbelievable. Wolverine sightings in Ontario are incredibly rare, and I can't tell you how excited I was to see this. At this point of the trip, I was definitely on cloud nine. I must have looked at the footage a hundred times just to make sure that what I'd seen was real and that I'd actually captured it. I was just a couple kilometers away now from the takeout and I couldn't wait to get back to the car and get some cell phone service to tell my wife that I'd just seen a Wolverine. I think I was still in shock. After the final portage, I came around this point and all of a sudden, just a few feet away from me, was a bull moose swimming as fast as he could towards the shoreline. To see and feel the size and power of that animal that close to you, it's unforgettable. Say, I come around the corner. There's a bull moose swimming around the corner beside me. I, I don't know what to say. Dumbfounded. It didn't seem real to me that this was my final day on the trip, but. If ever there was a way for a canoe trip to end, for me, this was it.